Okay, we need to talk about the ROG Ally, which could be the first real Steam Deck competitor. It was initially unveiled on the 1st of April, so most people took it to be an April Fool's joke. But it turns out Asus has actually been working on this thing for the past five or so years. They've come up with a, a number of different iterations for it. And actually, so they started well before the Steam Deck was even announced. If you take a look at the specs, this thing really does blow the Steam Deck out of the water. But the price is the main concern. We, we've heard from Asus that they are aiming for under $1,000, which frankly, the, you know, it doesn't really say much, does it? So there's two SKUs, first of all. There's two SKUs. And current leaks suggest that the higher tier SKU is going to be aiming for around the $600 to $700 mark, which also means that the the entry-level SKU is probably going to be aiming for around the five to $600 mark, I would, I would imagine, which really is, is pretty competitive. I mean, so first of all, let's, let's quickly go through the specs, right? So first of all, it's running a custom, I'll come back to that later, a custom AMD APU. It's the Ryzen Z1 series, or Z1 if, you, if you're American. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to continue to say Z1. So it's running an AMD Ryzen Z1 um, or a Z1 Extreme, depending on which SKU you buy. And for a direct comparison, the Z1 is basically a one-to-one -one for the AMD Ryzen 7640U, which has six cores and 12 threads. And the Z1 Extreme is again, basically a one-to-one -one for the the Ryzen 7840U, which has eight cores and 16 threads. So you're talking about a two core and four thread uplift. Both of them come with RDNA 3 graphics cores, but the Z1 comes with four and the Z1 Extreme comes with 12. So it seems like, a, again, a 3x uplift when it comes to graphics performance. That means the Z1 has around 2.8 teraflops with the Z1 Extreme pushing 8.6, which is an incredible difference, right? That being said, despite the supposed 3x uplift, with the uh, graphics performance, the actual uplift when it comes to, to real world performance is more like 10 to maybe 20%. And it seems like that's because the ROG Ally is capped by the speed of its memory. So it seems like the, the memory is the bottleneck. So despite the fact that the Z1 Extreme is actually significantly more powerful than the, than the Z1, it's not actually too big a disparity between the two. It also comes with 16 gigs of RAM, which is very good. Uh, obviously a micro SD card slot. It has Wi-Fi 6E built in, which is again, very, very good. And it only weighs, surprisingly enough, 608 grams, which is impressive because the, the Steam Deck, oh, sorry. because the Steam Deck is a, is a chunky boy and this thing weighs around 660 grams. So that means the ROG Ally is around 10% lighter than the Steam Deck, which is pretty impressive. It also runs Windows 11 as opposed to Steam OS and one of the most exciting things about this is the fact that it comes with a 1080p display, a 70 inch 1080p display that also has a refresh rate of 120 Hertz. And that's incredible. That's, that's genuinely very impressive. So if you watch the initial video by the folks on this, he points out that, you know, it, it is a bit of a marketing gimmick in the sense that you are never, never going to hit 120 frames per second on higher end games. Even on like older games, you'd be really struggling to, to hit 120. You'd probably get to like maybe 80, 80 to 100, right? Um, on on uh, older games. And obviously with, with retro games, you will easily hit the 120. That's not really much of an issue. But the 120 hertz screen is a bit of a a marketing gimmick in the sense that, you know, they're, they're advertising it. But you, you, you will never get to that uh, frame rate. That being said, it is a FreeSync compatible display, which is very good because that means... So it's, it's, you know, it's a VRR display, which means it can change the refresh rate depending on the game and depending on the, the frame rate that it's currently getting. So it's never going to really feel too, too stuttery or anything. That means that hopefully, hopefully when it comes to battery life, it's not going to be too bad because the refresh rate is going to be dynamically changing as, as it goes along. So that's actually a very good thing. Another very impressive thing about this screen is apparently, apparently it can display colors across 100% of the sRGB color space which compared to the Steam Deck, the reason people complain about the Steam Deck's display and about it looking washed out and unsaturated is because it only hits around 70% of the sRGB color space. And, you know, to get around that, people tweak it and bump up the saturation. But what that does is you increase the saturation, sure, but you lose out on the detail of, of most of the colors. So it's it's a bit of a, like a, like a, a band-aid fix, right? So you're, you're making the screen look better, subjectively, but you're losing out on color information. So yeah, that's actually why this is pretty impressive because it's actually a good quality display with FreeSync with up to a 120 Hertz. It's 1080p and it's around the same size as the Steam Deck's 
display as well. And I don't believe the, the bezel is quite as large. So it's impressive. It's genuinely very impressive. So the fact that it runs Windows 11 as opposed to Steam OS is both a pro and a con, right? It's a pro in the sense that you can play literally any game that you want because Windows obviously has the, the driver support and everything to basically just play anything and everything. So playing games is not going to be an issue. The main issue is the fact that Windows is infamously bad for, I guess, bloat, right? Generally speaking, Windows tends to run a lot of processes and stuff in the background, which tends to slow down the overall performance of your machine. I would assume Asus has um, some sort of like custom layer on top of on top of Windows, so they probably de-bloated it in some aspect, right? Because they also have their custom control panel. I think it's called the the Armory Core, which allows you to basically change the the frame limit, the refresh rate, and um, a couple of other things basically on the fly, which is cool. Again, it's very similar to the Steam Deck, and it's sort of like power control panel thing on the right. And it seems like with Armory Core, you can just sign in to all your various game platforms like like Steam, your know, Xbox Game Pass, Epic Games, all the rest of them, and just have one consolidated place where you can download and play all your games, which again is very nice because on the, on the Steam Deck, it's it's doable. It's just a lot more hassle. In terms of controls, the ROG Ally is very similar to the Steam Deck, except it's missing the trackpads. So that, that also means that the overall, I guess, footprint of the device is much smaller because you basically get rid of the space that the trackpads were occupying. Um, but I don't know. I, d I don't know how I feel about that because because operating the desktop mode of SteamOS with the, the trackpads, it just it's just perfect. It should it should be okay because you know I'm I'm assuming there's like a uh, a Windows 11 tablet mode type thing where it should it should be easy to navigate and also it has a touchscreen so it's not going to be too bad. But it is one thing to to, to keep in mind. So yeah, it's going to come with all the standard controls. So obviously the D-pad, the two joysticks, space buttons. I believe the joysticks are a bit further down, so they're going to occupy the space that the trackpad is currently occupying. And on the back, there's going to be only two um, paddles as, as opposed to four, which again, it's not too bad. It's, it's still better than, than nothing. But again, it's going to be significantly smaller than this because, it, you know, the Steam Deck is a, is a chunky boy. The ROG Ally should be probably around, I don't know, I would imagine, say, 10 to 20% of smaller because, you know, it's 10% lighter and it's missing the trackpads. So, yeah, that, that's probably a probably good estimate. It also seems like the ROG Ally is going to be significantly quieter than the Steam Deck. So the Steam Deck basically has one giant fan that spins right about here with the exhaust right at the top. It seems like the ROG Ally has two smaller fans on either side with again an, an exhaust at the top. But from all of Asus's marketing material, it seems like they have really, really tried to get the fans as silent as possible. And, it, and you know, from, from early impressions, it seems like they have succeeded. Uh, we'll see how it how they actually perform with regards to cooling, but it's an interesting idea at least. The main concern with the ROG Ally is the battery life. So the great thing about the, about the Steam Deck is when it comes to overall performance, of obviously the ROG Ally is going to have the Steam, Steam Deck beat hands down. But the Steam Deck's main draw is at lower power consumption, so at lower TDP. This thing blows everything else out of the water. This is the single most efficient handheld gaming machine on the market. At TDP is of, I believe, like, well, from, from 1 up to, like, about 7 or 8. This thing really does beat everything else. And also, because the ROG Ally is about 10% lighter than the Steam Deck, I would imagine its battery is about 5 to 10% smaller as well. So the issue with the ROG Ally, right, is it's going to have a 1080p display that runs maximum 120Hz. It's going to have better colors, and it's going to be lighter, which means it's probably going to have a smaller battery. So all of that... And plus the fact that, that the, the AMD Z1 and Z1 Extreme are going to be operating at probably a minimum of, of uh, 15 to 30 watts does not bode very well for battery life at all. So again, because it's a variable refresh rate display, it should be able to conserve battery life to some extent when it's changing the refresh rate, but <laughs> it doesn't look promising for, for battery life. I'll tell you that much. You can also buy like this external GPU that you, you can plug directly into the ROG Ally. So I believe they're going to sell the 40, 70, 80, and 90. And the minimum price is going to be $1,000. So I believe it's, it's 1000 for the 40, 70, 1500 for the 40, 80, and 2K for the 40, 90. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's not good. Uh, and it seems like it's a fairly proprietary connector. So I believe it's only going to work with the ROG Ally. It's not worth it, obviously, right? But I guess we'll, we'll have to see. If you can use it with, with other things, um, then it might it might potentially be worth it, but even then, like, don't buy it.
please <laughs> just save your money buy something else yeah i mean again it's it's an interesting idea but it's uh, for the price and just for the for the limited use it's not really worth it so alas oh and one very cool feature on the ROG Ally is that the power button has a fingerprint reader so that's going to be quite nice actually it's, it's 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 quite cool because obviously windows has windows hello which is the sort of like uh, the biometric authentication thing you should be able to just use that with your with your fingerprint on the, on the power button. So it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice feature to add. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks cool. Like again, look, if if they can target, if they can hit around 400 to 500 dollars for the base model, this is going to be a very good buy. Um I would I would imagine it's more going to be for the Z1, I would imagine probably around 550-ish dollars and then for the Z1 Extreme maybe like 650 to like 700 is what I would imagine the price is going to be but we'll find out very soon they have a like a press conference on the 11th of may so in just about two weeks time so that's going to be a very interesting uh an interesting watch so i guess overall it seems very interesting and i think i'm 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 <laughs> i'm thinking of getting one it depends on the the price and its availability here in the uk but i'm very very tempted very tempted to need that being said if you want to see what i thought of the steam deck after owning it for about six months click up here and i'll catch you next time